Hey everyone, welcome again to another financial analysis video. I'm Moe Damin. And I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at a, a company based in the UK, a company called James Fisher. So James Fisher basically provide um, integrated solutions, engineering, equipment, etc., to the oil and gas industry, marine yeah. industry, nuclear, uh, sustainable energy, renewable energy. Um, and think of things like, you know, inspection and monitoring equipment, um, lifting and handling equipment, uh, even things like submarine rescue equipment and services. So pretty interesting business, actually, that we're going to be looking into today. Um, now, they're a UK company which was founded in uh, 1847, so been around for a while. Uh, and this company, interestingly, came as a request from two people, uh, two of our viewers, uh, and one of whom asked an uh, interesting question around you know, looking at the debt and, you know, how EPS rose along with the share price until December 2020. So he's asking a question, which is, you know, how did the debt help the rising headline EPS? Great question. And we're going to we're going to cover that. Um, so before we do so, uh, stick around, because we're also going to talk about the share price. And as we always do, you know, what is the context of the share price along with the financial statement and what story it's telling us about the company? Remember, we're here only in this show. Uh, is really focused at raising your financial acumen and knowledge. You know, finance is the language of business. And if you are interested in growing as a business person, you've got to learn the language of business. So whether you are in uh, investment, whether you're sales, whether you're in your career and finance is a big part of your career growth, this is the show for you. So don't forget to like, share, and especially subscribe and hit that notification button. And just like our two viewers, if you have a company that you would like us to analyze because you're really interested in them, do leave a note in the comment section, give us some context and make sure to subscribe because you will get notification for when we publish that analysis. So on the share price, uh, floated in 1995. Uh, if you invested back then, you'd be sitting on a, on a profit or an increase of 425%. Pretty nice. Uh, if you invested five years ago, story would be different. You'd be down by 77%. And uh, a year ago, you would be down by 61%. So stick around because there was quite a bit of a rise and then quite a bit of a drop in recent, in recent times as well. So we're going to talk about that later on. So um, why don't we cover that then? Let's, uh, let's analyze the financial statement for you and answer one of our viewers' question around EPS and debt and how, the, how that's risen. So Ted, please take it away. Hi, Moe. Good to see you and welcome to all of our viewers. I hope you are all well. And here we go, James Fisher and Son. So once again, as Moe mentioned, we are going to be doing the financial analysis. Our aim is to improve your financial literacy. So can you read and interpret the financial numbers? So if you want to know more about this company, uh, and I have to admit, I know very little about this company, but there's a lot of information here, who they are, what they do, which markets they're in, what solutions they're providing, how they're providing it, who's providing it, who are their main customers, and all the other bits and pieces you want to know about a company, they are there. But we uh, on this channel are interested in the financials. So we're going to bounce through all of this kind of uh, uh, stuff all the way down to the important bit, which is uh, the, uh, the actual financial statements, the financial performance of the business, which starts with the income statement. So here we have the income statement. Now, uh, top line, uh, top line, we're looking at the sales. Sales uh, for these guys, we're dealing in millions of pounds, you'll notice. Uh, we're interested in really, I quite like these kind of um, these total columns. Anybody who starts talking about separately disclosed items and kind of like, you know, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 it, it doesn't often happen kind of uh, uh, talk. You just see that it happens pretty much every every year. So um, I, I have to admit, I, I really kind of ignore um, anything which is exceptional items and separately disclosed items and just look at the core business numbers. Revenue, 494 million pounds which is a fall of 5% on the revenue from the previous year. So these guys have seen a contraction since 2020. Now, 2020 included the pandemic. So that's not kind of, you know, I'm not feeling overly confident that, you know, a company that's shrinking uh, should really be shrinking. Surely it should be the other way around after a pandemic year. Anyway, um, so their sales are down and their cost of sales um, are at about 78%. 
which leaves them with a profit, a gross profit, and they are profitable, but a gross profit margin of 22%. Now, that's better than the previous year when it was only 18%, but 22%, that's not a lot to play with. That's pretty tight margins. Um, you know, again, it kind of depends on the industry you're in. And these guys, you know, they're supplying marine services, obviously very expensive. Um, but you've got to remember that these guys, you know, that, that there's not a lot of wiggle room there. They kind of, you know, they're getting closer to the supermarket kind of, you know, razor thin margins rather than the kind of the Coca-Cola. Oh, we've got lots of margins to play with. Uh, and, and these guys are suffering from that as a result, because you'll see their admin expenses are greater than their gross profit and therefore they are booking an operating loss. So they are operating at a loss. They were operating loss in the previous year. They've managed to cut some of those costs, which is good, um, but still they're operating at a loss. And an operating at a loss is not good, especially when you've got debt and you need to be able to service the debt. So here we have a company that they've got debt and our, and our friend, um, our subscriber said, look, you know, can you have a look at that debt? They've got debt. It's eight. Uh, they're paying 8.3 a million pounds a year interest, uh, almost the same as the previous year, nine million pounds. So the interest bill, 8.3, but they're operating at a 20 million pound loss. So this is not looking too good. If you're making a loss uh, and, you, and you can't service your debt at some point, you know, you're going to run out of road and it's going to be game over. It's a kind of Thomas Cook moment. And, you know, for those of you who, who are uh, interested in Thomas Cook, we do have a video um, on that. And, 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 and the warning signs were back in 2010 uh, for a company that went bust in 2019. So this could be the warning signs. OK, I'm not saying it is. It just could be a kind of like, you know, this is a ding -a -ling alarm bell. A um, little bit of a tax credit, but it doesn't really matter. They are making a loss. There is their loss. The loss has come down from the previous year, but they're still making a loss. Now, uh, earnings per share. Look at the earnings per share. Now, the earnings per share has not, uh, well, has increased, It's but it's gone from a kind of a negative, a loss. So when we talk about earnings per share, we should really be taking LPS, loss per share. The loss per share has gone from 114 to 55. And the reason that it's gone from 114 to 55 is uh, the reason it's got better, uh, it's, it's almost halved, is because the profit, uh, or rather the loss, has halved. They've halved it from about 60 million to 30 million. So 60 million to 30 million, 114 to 55 you know, you, you're basically looking at halving. So it doesn't look to me like there's been a big change in the equity. So in terms of the comment that we got, it's kind of like, you know, can you tell me how the debt has changed the EPS? The answer is debt doesn't affect EPS. Earnings per share is literally earnings. That's the profitability compared with the number of shares in issue. It's the only thing it can have, it's got to do with debt is debt has a cost, the interest cost, and the interest is deducted in, in arriving at your earnings per share. So the only effect that debt would have if somebody was doing a debt for equity swap. So if they had lots of shares and they borrowed money to buy back those shares and have less shares, then they can use debt in order to boost their earnings per share. Now, um, you know, you want to look out for companies that are doing that. They're artificially, you know, inflating their earnings per share by a debt for equity swap. Um, but these guys do not look like they are doing that. Now, we'll get confirmation from that when we look in the balance sheet. So income statement not looking too good. Let's go down to the balance sheet and see how um, uh, see how that's looking. Here we go. So here is the balance sheet. We're looking at the left hand two columns. So we're really interested in the group here. Um, we'll not worry too much about the company um, and the group. You can see the assets Well, the assets have shrunk. OK, and it looks to me like the assets have probably shrunk. You can see uh, that they've got this property plant and equipment uh, and the goodwill. Now, either they are selling their assets or they're just allowing those assets to depreciate in value. And we'll find that out when we look at the cash flow statement. But it looks to me like, you know, that they're kind of, you know, maybe they're just making a profit, a loss. They haven't got the cash. <coughs> They've got too much debt. They can't borrow anymore. The shareholders don't want to put any more money in. They're struggling to reinvest. Is this the sign of a contracting business? That's a question rather than a statement. Um, so non-current assets, not looking too good. They're starting to shrink. The current assets also it's shrinking. Um, you know, they still got cash in the bank. That's OK. They, you know, it's down from 90, excuse me, 93 million to 68 million. Uh, they've still got 285 million of current assets, 
and compare that to the current liabilities, they're still liquid, okay? They're still okay, they're still alive. They can still pay their bills as they fall due. Um, uh, and you'll notice uh, that they've got a little bit of current liabilities. Uh, so in their current liabilities, uh, it's mainly trade creditors, okay? So they've got inventory and trade receivables, which they're trying to sell and turn into cash uh, or collect the money in, they're turning it into cash, and then that cash will be used to pay their suppliers. So liquidity is not an issue right now, but it looks to me like if we look at their liquidity ratio, for example, um, it looks to me um, like, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's about the same as the previous year. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm not convinced I really want a company to go, you know, this company in particular to go much below that. So on an acid test, which is where you eliminate inventory, that's this number here, you just take that out of the, um, of the equation, uh, we end up with a, with a ratio of about 1.18. Um, so they probably don't want to go much below um, uh, 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 below that. Now, in terms of the debt, uh, our, our, our comment about the debt. So here's the debt. You'll see 174 million, 179 million. Uh, and we need to include also uh, the borrowings, 30, uh, the sort of the short term borrowings, 33 uh, down to 80. So this has fallen. And this is pretty much the same. So overall, debt has gone down. Now, that's good. And actually, if you remember, when we looked at the income statement, you could see that the interest, the paying that had fallen and the interest is going down because the amount of debt is going down. So it looks to me like they, you know, they realize they've got a lot of debt. They're taking steps in order to try and reduce that debt. It's not a massive amount. And just to reiterate, that debt is not affecting the earnings per share. What will affect the earnings per share is the number of shares in issue, okay? And we can see that we get our first view when we look at these numbers here and we notice that these numbers here haven't really changed. And if they haven't changed, it means that these guys are not issuing more shares or buying back their shares. So if they issue debt in order to buy back shares, we would expect the debt figure here to go up and we'd expect uh, these figures here to go down. Well, they haven't moved. Um, uh, on previous years. So both of them are pretty consistent and therefore there's no debt for equity swap. So that halving in the loss per earnings is driven purely by the halving in the loss. That's, that's basically what it comes down to. Um, retained earnings, they've got some retained earnings, but you can see that they have reduced and obviously they've reduced because they have been making a loss. I'd be very surprised if they're paying out dividends. I'd be very surprised if they are doing any share buybacks but we can see that by looking at the movement in equity. So let's go and have a look at the movement in equity. So just remember this figure here, Moeed, of 210 million. That's the net asset value. So that's the theoretical breakup of this business. If you take this business, sell off all the assets, put them on eBay, pay off the liabilities, you'll end up with 210 or $211 million, a theoretical amount, not an actual amount. Um, Here's the cash flow statement. Now, they are generating cash. So that's that's our first piece of really good news. They are generating cash a uh, little bit down from the previous year, but they are generating cash. And mainly uh, because of uh, this sort of depreciation amortization and this thing called separately disclosed items, ex excluding amortization. A um, little bit of movement in um, uh, working capital going on here. But, you know, they're, they're generating some cash. So that, that, that's got to be a, that's got to be good news for these guys. Um, in terms of their investment, um, their sort of capex. Uh, so the actual um, you'll see that, you know, they've been disposing. Um, here we go. They, they're disposing of some property, plant and equipment. Doesn't look like they're buying a lot of property, plant and equipment. There's a little bit of purchase going on. Again, we might compare that um, to the uh, to the um, uh, the the. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the depreciation amortization. Um, so if you're depreciating your assets at 44 million and you're only buying 22 million, you're not replacing your assets, okay? And that's a kind of, that's a consistent number. So if you look at that and you see that kind of relationship on a consistent basis, again, it's just a kind of ding -a -ling, -a ling it's an alarm bell that says this is potentially a, um, a, 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 a shrinking business, so to speak. Um, what are they also they doing? So disposal of, so this, you know, here we go. There's the disposal of property, plant and equipment going on. Um, they are disposing of a subsidiary, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and, you know, so really here, um, you know, there's a little bit of investment, but, you know, really these guys are, um, you know, that they're, they're, they're selling off subsidiaries that they're, they're, they're not investing. Um, you know, they are 
you kind of get a sense of they're kind of you know you know drawing up the bridge and kind of cutting everything to the bone and and and, and survival is is uppermost. Um, last section is their financing activities. Um, so they did do a little bit of share issue of share capital, but you know really um, you know that's nothing to write home about. That's that's teeny 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 amount. Um, so they got some financing costs. Uh, you'll notice here this is the the um the uh, refinancing. So they are refinancing that loan, and you'll notice that you know they they you know the repayment is higher than the borrowing. So their debt has gone down only by five million, but it's going in the right direction for these guys. Previous year, um, again, uh, some repayment. So they're you know they're really they're, they're, there's net no cash flow um, uh, from their investing activities because their investment is being paid for by the sale of existing assets. Um, and so they are using their cash that they're generating here really to try and pay down their debt and pay for those lease payments as well. Uh, and so the sum total is that these guys are, you know, they, you know, their cash um, has, uh, you know, uh, uh, has gone up from 13 and a half million to 34 million. So that's good. They've got, you know, reasonable amount of cash in the bank, 34 million. Um, but I just, I just don't feel these guys are really out of the woods yet. It's, it's kind of like, mm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced by it. So, you know, it looks like it's a contracting business. It looks like, you know, th this is, this is certainly not kind of, you know, we're on our way to the moon, you know, pile in right now. These guys look like they're really sort of trying to sort of shore up for the future and make sure that they don't hiccup and go bust, so to speak. Um, you know, they, you know, they really, you know, their, their working capital, you know, their inventory days look like 45 days, accounts receivable, uh, 118 days, you know, that's a long time uh, in the oil and gas, they've got to fight to get the money out, they're paying their accounts payable 136 days, these are back of envelope calculation, Mouid, but, you know, it just says that, you know, I mean, you know, their cost of working capital by my calculation is about 38 million and they've got 86 million. So they are solvent, you know, and they are kind of ticking along. But I just get a feel that, you know, if if I was the CFO of this company, I'd be probably stomping around the office saying, look, guys, you know, we've got to we've got to cut our costs. We've got to really you know, we've got to really pull this one out the bag because otherwise we're not going to be around. Uh, you know, they've been around for whatever it is, um, uh, nearly 100 years, they, uh, 150 years, 160 years, 180 years. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, they've been long, around for a long time, Moe. Um, 180 years shows my maths is not quite up to speed, is it, um, without a spreadsheet in front of me. But, um, you know, are they going to be around for the next 180 years? Uh, you know, that that is a, you know, that is a, um, a you know, the million dollar question, I guess. And, and so if we go and look at their share price, um, we can see that, you know, it's been kind of, it was bouncing around uh, and then it really did take off. Now, why it went up, I have absolutely no idea. So this kind of, you know, th there's the global financial crisis. Um, uh, the pandemic is, I think the pandemic is somewhere in there at a guess. So these guys, you know, really even so, you know, you can just take, this has just been a massive, you know, kind of, you know, success uh, run all the way up to the very peak. Um, uh, and and maybe maybe that was the pandemic actually uh, and thinking about it and and it, and it just kind of but you know why you know I mean it's right off the boil now it's 194 195 million that's the market cap remember the net asset value Moe I told you it was 210 million so how do you fancy it Moe you and I club together we raise 195 million pounds we buy this company we sell all the assets on eBay we pay off the liabilities. Uh, we end up with net assets of 210 million. That's 15 million profit we're going to make. You can have seven and a half and I can have seven and a half. Well, you know as well as I do that nothing is ever quite as simple as that. Um, but that's the theory. These guys are basically, you know, they're not trading at a premium. And often we talk about this goodwill and how we like, you know, companies which are really favorable. That's trading at a goodwill. There's no P ratio because there's no E. There's no dividend yield because there's no dividend. Um, you know, these guys, you know, I, you know, for me, is it investment? Uh, I'm, I'm not convinced. I mean, the share price is right off the boil. You are picking up something which is on the cheap. The question is, you know, it, it's really down to their strategy. Have they turned the corner? Is this a shrinking company? And we're just going to see it shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink until it's no longer relevant and go pop as everyone moves to electrics, et cetera, et cetera. Or actually, is this a company which has shrunk uh, uh, because of whatever been going on, and it's made some sort of big, big strategic decisions, pulled out of some markets, moved into others, worked out what's going wrong, solved the problems, and now this is a big kind of success story, and we're kind of reset and restart 
back here and it's going to do exactly that again and it's now going to do this kind of you know all the way up to the good old glory days uh if i knew that moeed i would not be sitting here i would be retired on my super yacht in the caribbean uh, as would you so um there we go there's our analysis of james fisher do we provide any insight it's um you know it's uh I think I think times are tough at James Fisher, um, uh, and I think they're going to remain tough for a while. Um, if anybody knows the company, anybody's working at the company, maybe the, we've had comments uh, before from uh, CFOs of company. If you'd like to tell us, you know, where we're wrong, uh, or you know, give us the kind of the positive side. But you know, this is this is not something that I'm necessarily going to be sticking into my um, uh, into my portfolio. Maybe I'd put this on the watch list, Moe. Let me, let, let, let's, let's put it like that kind of, you know, wait and see if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And, and that was a, there was a lot of insight. There was a lot of knowledge dropped here in this particular video. Um, so if you need to go back and re-listen to this video again, take some notes, I, I strongly recommend you to do. If you're a salesperson, there was so much in there. I, I we always say, you can understand the character of the company almost as if it's a human being by reading its financial statement. And the characteristics you're going to get from this is we're being very careful with our spend. We're hunkering down. And if you're a supplier or looking to sell to this company, this is the video for you to really watch because uh, you will start to get some insights into, you know, why negotiations may be a bit tough, why payment terms might be a bit tougher, why you're probably not getting responses, why sales, cycles are taking longer with this type of company you know there you have it right there that really tells you the, the, the information so great video i think for any of those that are interested in this business um and uh, yeah if you have a company that you want us to analyze again whether you're investing in them selling to them joining them or whether you're trying to improve your financial acumen whatever the just whatever the reasons may be do leave a note in the comment section right and and give us a question or tell us some context as one of our viewers did and you saw we answered the question for that person so uh, so we answered that question. So yeah, do leave that note in the comment section, like, share, subscribe as always. So uh, let's uh, let, until the next video. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone else. We'll see you on the next uh, next company that we analyze. Good to see you, Marie. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one. And the QR code, once again, will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book. Uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, Otherwise, that's everything from me. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to the channel. More subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know, ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry, any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you. Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up. Uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity, have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you on the next video.